welcome to Sail Away. We are Eric, Lauren, Rivers, and Zeke, and after traveling for three years aboard our monohull, we've decided it's time to make the leap to a catamaran. Join us for tours and reviews as we search for the perfect one. How wet does my hair look? Doesn't look really wet. It's a little, but we live on a boat. Okay. Cheers. Oh, we're doing drinks this time. <laughs> and we have drinks Cheers. this time. Figured it'll smooth out our process. Welcome to our catamaran video series, our tours. Um, this is our search for the perfect used catamaran. And right now we are in a specific category that is our category because we are looking for a catamaran. We've been living on our boat for three years, monohull. Check out the videos if you don't know us. And we're moving to a cat. Our parameters are under $400,000. Approximately 10 to 20 years old. Uh, four cabins, engine hours under 4,000. Uh, the scoring system that we've got is a scoring of thumbs. See if I can remember this. Yeah. One. One. Two. Three. <laughs> four. Oh, wait. <laughs> five. <laughs> you can use either thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and just like our first one, this is in five categories. One build quality, two, sailability, three, trampoline scored only by rivers. I'm pointing to them because he's right over there. Four, livability, and five, X factors. And I will just say that is sort of the kind of unquantifiable stuff, how much you just like the boat. Yes. It's kind of the us factor. Anyway, the boat we're going over today, the much discussed and often debated Lagoon 450. Now the one we're looking at today. Much ado about nothing. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. No, Today's is a 2013 uh, four cabin like everything we're looking at. We also looked at a couple more of these so we've seen several of them mm -hmm. and admittedly I think we're sort of pooling our memories about all these into these ratings. We will talk at the end about the whole bulkhead thing. It's been all over the internet for at least a year, maybe a year and a half or more. Two? Yeah. It happened right when we were in Grenada. Because we had friends with a 450 right. and they sold theirs and then all of it came out and I was like, oh, Good they sold theirs right before <laughs> it. We'll talk about that a little bit more and we're not going to claim to be experts about it. But we do have opinions on it. So. Opinions on everything. <laughs> Let's get to it. Lagoon 450. Here's the tour. Looks like she could use a bottom job too. We know what that's like. How you doing? Was it was it Brian? Yes. Hey, nice to meet you. you guys are? Eric, Eric and Lauren and Rivers. So if you come on board, uh, you're pretty tall. You can step over here, but there's also some steps. Okay. To the Is it nice and springy? Okay, good. Good, good, good. So this is their version of the front porch, which came, they've been doing this since the 440 on lagoons. And obviously you don't get a roof, but we have seen them with a very simple bimini that you mount and just sort of lock over this top, hey, just to give you some shade. Up here. You pull yourself up there. Just be careful. Hey, remember it is wet, so be careful when you're walking. No jumping around, all right? Not up there. I know, it's good grip. Really good stuff. But it doesn't hurt your feet either. And this is... My gosh, it's a little sword. Do you remember how many hours are on the generator and motors? Motors are like 4,300. And you can get to these. Well, actually, no, you can't on this one. Is there is there a hatch that leads into the? I don't the believe front? there is. Okay. Between the two. On some, I've seen them with on like a hatch right there. And this one is a. Yeah, this one has a hatch. Oh, okay. This one is a 2013. Yeah. Yeah, We've seen this opening from the forward berth to the crew berth on a few different models. And to us, it just looks like a perfect playroom slash storage extension for rivers. 
fresh. So this one's got an all new rig. And is as is the story with a lot of these boats we're looking at. Storm damage, but it's all been taken care of. River's already approved the trampoline. And you know, these boats just have a ton of space on the decks. Well, uh, is it this boat has a washing machine? Yeah, I think there's a washing machine. Up on the right left side of the school, the second bridge we were out One thing I like about the flybridge is not only is this like a really nice spot just to hang out for gosh five six people or if you want to hang out on the pad out here but it gives everybody the opportunity to sail the boat you got a lot of room here and obviously one person can easily handle tacking the boat and control everything but it's spread out so that more than one person can help out you know obviously Lauren and I like to sail together and so that would be a plus for us and here of course is the biggest downside I'm 6'2 and this boom is face height for me so there up to the top of that sail bag without some form of ladder or assistance. You can climb up the very front. There are mast steps. So it's the teak in the cockpit. Not on the sterns, but just in the cockpit there. And these have the more traditional Dingy davits, which are very cool, very sturdy. Those are beasts. And a lot of boats use this as an extra support for solar. If you put a solar array out here in the back. And these engine access is on the sterns of the scoops here. As you go down the side here, there's panels covering the motor. All three of these panels come out so you can truly get down in there. But from up here, you can do the real basics, check the oil, check the water, that kind of stuff. Looks like the separator is right over there, which is a little difficult to get to. Not the easiest, but still better room than we have on our model. And then, of course, if you are smart about how you do it, you can store a lot of stuff on top of here, as long as it's not too hard to get to the motor. Whatever your opinion may be on the looks of lagoons and the straight up and down windows, the brightness, the view, and the lack of any sun glare is pretty much unrivaled. The salon as a whole is expansive and inviting, even with a generous U-shaped galley taking up space. Your foot off of it. There, that was it. That's all. Reverse. So cool. We're taking pictures for no one on the Yeah, they want to know what it looks like too. The construction of the drawers and the cabinetry in general is not my personal favorite. But the use of all the space is excellent. It's huge, isn't that? And a whole nother under, nice. underneath the oven. It's a little smaller than ours. Yeah. But I think we could still probably, probably do basically amount. the same amount of stuff it's in definitely it. definitely a little a bigger for a big for a round Well, I know it wouldn't be big enough for a round pizza. Why? It would be yours or rectangular. And this side, oh, you're out there. This side has the hatch that comes through. That side does not. But you gotta take this panel off, I think. Yeah. But yeah, now I'm back in here again, looking at this 
space underneath is so nice. Rivers, rivers, rivers. I'm laying in my bed. This would be my bed. This would be yours, yeah. yeah. You're right. It's really it nice. It has a giant cabinet. It's like a secret cabinet. This hardware is not that bad when it's like working right. This is a secret cabinet. Yeah, that, I wonder how that comes off. We'll probably have to figure that out. Because there's a hatch that goes through there into the front so that you can get to the other part of it. So this has the electric heads just like ours with a household size toilet seat, which is really nice. Could use some new hardware for sure, like you said. Yeah. It's looking real rough, but that's no doable. The work. Yeah, that's, that's all. That's all doable. I bet you there's a Lagoon site where you can order all this crap. This is me in the shower. Hi guys. At 6'2, trying to get it to go up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, like acres of room. Really nice. Another look at the toilet and sink. And again, something we didn't talk about much, but hold on. Tons of cabinet space in here. Really a lot. Which is really lacking in the leopards. Under the Under the sink storage. Too. <laughs> yeah, through holes are in there. Water. Water lines. Got a headroom in here, so. Lots of light. We would be removing that film and putting the kind that you can see through all the windows. Bilges, water pumps, bilge pumps, through halls, a bunch of them all in a row. Really easy to get to. What's this? Is this just floor storage? Yeah, right. So water pump's right or water tank is right there. Oh, there's a secret, a secret, secret things under here. Yeah. That's why I have a car on the floor. Look under there. I think batteries are under here. I didn't see them. That battery control right there. And this is probably, yeah, an actual door. Every cabin is roomy and bright with loads of storage. And unlike the cabinetry, the quality of the doors and wall finishes is really good. Another head, this is in one of the aft cabins. Nice teak floor. A ton of room in here. And again, with the very, very big shower. All this hardware probably needs replaced. This stuff's all getting a little rough or a lot rough. But that's not too big a deal. There's all kinds of aftermarket stuff you can get for that. Huge, huge cabinets in the bathroom here. And they're solid. Nice solid latches on the bottom. I like the wood frames. A lot of the boats, you just get like a, a rough mirror and then they get real bad looking on the corners. This with the frame, it kind of takes away from that. Washing machine. That's pretty cool. Not a bad spot. It's up in the forward. This would be his room, which would be good because I'd be working on the other side of the boat, right. theoretically. theoretically. You could do laundry. Just while I'm working. Keep it going. Yeah. That'd be crazy. And it won't be, and, and it won't be much rolling. No. We're not hearing a generator, but the AC is very quiet. Yeah. I could definitely work with yeah. this AC. We'll have to hear it the other side. <laughs> Alright, let's just do this so you can show everybody. So this is the this has two sinks. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. And this is how it works. So this that kind of right there that that makes okay, we'll do it. Give it to give it a couple of pumps. Just yeah. Go ahead. 
There it goes. Okay. That's amazing. Good job. Let's see this freezer inside. You like this book? Ultimately, it's the clean simplicity of the layout of this boat that makes it really work. Alright, now we've entered my office. There we go, hear it now. And this is something about all of these, we're going to call them newer catamarans, that's a big deal for us, is these windows uh, in all the cabins. These actually have a film on the outside to keep the glare out, um, but there's a, a vinyl you can use that will keep the glare out, but you can actually see out pretty nicely. And we would undoubtedly replace that with that because it's really a big deal for us to be able to just be able to see out. I don't know, the boat starts swinging around because of a gust or squall or something. Uh, a lot of times you just want to take a peek out and see if it looks like you've moved. And, you know, we got to run upstairs, take our hat out of a hatch, whatever. So we'd really like to be able to just look out the window and not have to wonder. All right, great tour. There was the Lagoon 450. Clearly there's a lot to like about those boats and they're insanely popular. I mean, they've made hundreds of those things. Um, 500, obviously, right? I think something like 500, yeah. They uh, obviously are huge in charter companies for obvious reasons. They've just got so much space for a big bunch of people to have a great time, but all that space equals a pretty darn good living boat also. Let's get right into number one, and that's build quality. So that's obviously going to take into account this whole bulkhead issue. Here's my personal opinion on this, and a lot of this was gleaned from Lagoon's website. They have a, a whole website dedicated to this issue. They had the designers of the boat uh, consult with engineers and a bunch of different people to figure out why this happened and the best way to repair it and what the ramifications are of these problems. They don't all have this problem. I haven't looked at it recently, but the last I looked, I think 80 boats had reported the problem and Lagoon is providing kits paid for and all the, the actual service to, to fix these bulkhead problems. Right. That's not to say that they don't all have the potential to right. have the problems. They it do is, supposedly all have the potential. Yeah, it is a part of the build, but it is a known problem and every boat that is on the market right now, because it is a known problem, has either been fixed or is in the process of getting fixed. It's not a safety issue. It's not going to sink the boat, it's not going to hurt anybody, it's not going to dismast you, nothing's going to fall down. That's not the kind of problem this is. But what it does is just whack out the interior so that things are suddenly not fitting right and doors are crooked and, you know. But it's this, these aren't dangerous boats. And I think that's maybe been a little bit misunderstood. That said, if you can find one, especially one, that has had this taken care of preemptively mm -hmm. before any signs of it, you're going to get a pretty good value. Because compared to other boats in this category, these should be probably in the high 500s or mid 500s. They were the, the newest boats that we looked at, and the only reason they were in this category is because of this bulkhead issue. I think they started making these in 2009. That'll, that'll show down in the information here. So you can get one down around the 400,000 mark if you if you can find it. Everything is high demand right now. Even these, and I think it's because people recognize that you're getting a pretty good value if you get one that's been fixed and has a certificate and it's all 
right. above board legit, which generally speaking, you're gonna right. not have too much trouble with that. So, and at this point, this is such a known issue. It's been hashed over so much and we're doing it more that like they're getting taken care of. Like you're not gonna get one snuck in on you, right. basically. Other than that, the build quality of these boats, I mean, they're just a big, solid, chunky boat. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as the outside, the fiberglass and the hatches and all that kind of stuff, uh, stanchions, deck hardware, it's solid. It's it's good stuff. A little bit of like maybe a notch less than the Leopard 48 on the outside. And then for me on the inside, I've got some problems with some of it. I think the the doors and the walls are they're real solid and thick and heavy and a lot of the wall surfaces are really nice but the cabinetry itself to me comes off just a little chintzy the doors and edges of the cabinetry to me looked kind of ikea-ish <laughs> and the hardware the little knobs they use for the the doors and handles sounds like a small thing but they're they're tiny little knobs it drives me crazy this that's what a knob should be like on a boat that's a big nice solid what is that from love actually someone's got a big Colin's knob, got a big knob <laughs> yeah. and he's got a big knob <laughs> there you go didn't expect that <laughs> reference to no. come in you're the one talking about knobs yeah I don't know. but aside from that and i mean you know, if you're buying this boat for yourself, you can work on some of that stuff. And I don't know how you felt about all that stuff. I got little hands. They're fine. <laughs> you don't mind a little knob? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We digress. <laughs> <laughs> we give this one. I went three. Lauren went four. I went four with known bulkhead taken care of. Number two, sailability. This one's going to be kind of controversial too mm -hmm. because these have the well-known flybridge. We're pretty interested in that as a feature, not just for sailability and for you to be able to see, but for the extra space it gives you at anchor. But as for sailability, the vis visibility for you, that's a big deal. Right. So the flybridge is a, a definitely a pro for me. Yeah. Nothing beats that for you. For, no, for a, I can a shorter actually person. Yeah. see everything. But as far as sail handling goes, I like the flybridge for that because it's spread out. And I know a lot of people will like the idea of all the controls leading to the helm, and that is great. But I really like that to be spread out enough that other people can help sail. For us, like we're two sailors, we'll and it's, you know, we both want to be involved in that kind of stuff. And if we have guests, it's it's fun to get them involved yeah. as well. And with that, that may be different. And new. yeah, that's just us. <laughs> if if it works better that one person yeah. is in charge of sailing the boat, then right. the flybridge probably isn't right. Your style, and like the Leopard Forty Eight, it's all just like right there in right. a compact spot. But for this, we we just like that it's kind of spread out, and a lot of people can be up there at the helm and taking part if they want to. The biggest problem is the boom. You can't get to the boom to pack your sail or work on it or fix a messed up sail cover or whatever might be the case. There's lots of reasons that you might need to climb up to the boom. To do that, you gotta go through some acrobatics or put a ladder up there or do whatever. And that is just, it's just a byproduct of the flybridge. And you also have a much higher center of gravity, the force on the sail, the center of effort is higher. How much difference does that make on a giant boat like this when you're you're not trying to race, you're trying to get from point A to point B, hopefully sailing the boat well? It's arguable, I suppose. Again, there's a lot of controversy over how well any cruising catamaran will sail or can sail, and we hope to delve into that once we own one. We tend to believe that they can be sailed well by somebody who sails them properly. These lagoons are known to make fast passages. These things win their category in the ARC all the freaking time. So you might be able to argue that they're slow from a technical standpoint and by physics, if you put all the numbers on paper, but people know how to sail them where they're going and pretty quickly. So that said, sailability, 
With all that taken into consideration and our personal preferences, we score it. <laughs> Three and a four. I can't see the screen. All right, it's time to bring in our trampoline consultant, Rivers. You are up. Okay, this is the 450. This, this is, is the big one. The Lagoon 450. <laughs> the big one. What do you score this boat's trampoline? <laughs> a five. A five. What did you say, though? Because it was bouncy. It was bouncy. It was very bouncy, even though it had the dividing section for the chain in the middle. Yeah, which you didn't bounciness. necessarily like. Yeah. So, another five from Rivers for the trampoline. Easy. All right. Nice job, dude. Good call. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> Number four, livability. Okay, these things are gigantic. I mean, just to be on it, it just feels like a giant boat. Just what? and it is. It's high freeboard. It's just big in stature. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it has more space necessarily than the Leopard 48. Mm -hmm. It just feels big. As far as the interior goes, the headroom is insane. Every place. I'm 6'2", not a factor in any spot in the boat, anywhere, not even close. The shower had to be close to seven feet tall. I mean, I had, I had this much space above my head when I was standing there. It was crazy. I'm 6'2", and seriously, it was like that much, so 6'10"? No. <laughs> no. You'll see. You'll see the video clip. <laughs> no, it had the best galley that we've seen. It had the most open space. That's something that's really, really important to me and that I'm looking for. All I want is a place to put a yoga mat and do yoga. Like that, I just want an open space Multiple that places. is that yeah. big. Um, and this one definitely had, yeah, multiple places like that. The vertical windows are, they're open like all the way around. You can see almost 360 degrees around this boat, which is really nice because rivers could be up on the bow. Yeah, you can just you see, can see them straight from, from the very aft of the boat to forward. So it'd be really nice anywhere as long as you're up top, you'll be able to see wherever the yeah, child is. The beds are big. They're, they're walk arounds in the aft uh, cabins. Bathrooms are big. There's tons of storage in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. As far as we're concerned, it's the only boat of all of these that has like a perfect setup for my studio without doing anything. It's just a funny little feature of these boats, the way the forward cabins have a an opening right under the middle that you could literally slide a chair under and I could put a recording hood right on the bed and then just put it away underneath. And they're already very quiet because there's lots of soft uh, surfaces on the walls, the ceiling, so. I don't think some of the access is as good. The, the batteries were more hidden. The engines are kind of hard to get to yeah. for just the basic stuff. You've got to get down in there, remove three trays mm -hmm. to get those out of the way, and we're going to put stuff right. on those. I don't know who wouldn't. And then get down in just to do something like check a strainer. Yeah. One other thing, these boats also have a front porch. <laughs> Much like the Leopard, they just don't have a door to the front porch. Also kind of a cool spot. It's just not as convenient and it's more sunken down. I don't know if we would use it the same way as often. Right. Yeah, I just have I have thoughts of like trying to use that space and trying to take food and and platters around, around and outside and, and, and then with rivers trying to like if you're going to carry stuff around because suppose maybe everybody's hanging out out front, you know, there's kids on the trampoline and Adults are hanging around watching them and having drinks and whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to walk down into a little recessed thing with it and then, you know, or is it just fine to sit on a flat deck with a, some nice cushions? You know, right. I, I don't know. So, livability, all of these things taken into consideration. Ready? <laughs> I'm debating. I'm, I'm oh, debating. you're gonna change your score? Well, I think I think we brought up talking some things about it that I think my score should be slightly less, just to okay. like even things Let's out. Let's do it. Okay. Lower with the four. I know. I I just feel like you know a 
I think we brought us some good points that actually I hadn't thought about until right now. So um, <laughs> We write these down, <laughs> then when they come out of our mouths, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. we hear them. All right, number five, the last category is X factors. How does the boat just feel to you? Do you walk in and just like it? When you leave, are you kind of like got this like exciting feeling like, man, that would be cool to live on that boat. Do you feel like you're getting a good deal for the price? And yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Do you walk out saying, man, yes, if we bought it for that, oh, right. that'd be that would awesome. be awesome. Yeah. You know, I would say this was probably the homiest feeling boat of any boat we've been on in this category. Mm -hmm. It just just feels comfortable. It feels nice. Things look pretty, <laughs> you know. There's room to do things. There's room to store things. It's easy to make food. There's tons of different spaces for everybody to go hang out and do their thing. It just feels really, really good. It's a smart layout and it doesn't do anything crazy. It's all very straightforward. And again, back to the whole bulkhead thing, for us, if we found one that was well documented, caught before it started to alter some of the cabin uh, geometry and it's totally fixed, it just knocks your the price down. And, and maybe that affects the, the future price of it too, but we're in this catamaran bubble right now, we're on the tail end of it, and in a few years, how big a deal will this be? Right. It'll be proven that it's worked and it's been, right. yeah. And will the values of other catamarans in this category continue the sort of downward slide and maybe these, they already took a hit. Right. So they'll just... Maybe they kind of maintain. Right. It's a theory and I think there's something to it. I, I think if you can afford to find one of these in 400,000 or the low 400s and some I've seen for under and it's in good shape, bulkheads taken care of, I think you're getting a huge, huge value. Now, is it a cool boat? Just from a sailor standpoint, from when you look at it sitting at the dock, do you go, ooh, sexy boat? Not for me. I, I like them, but does it like get me jazzed? Not exactly. No. Anyway, X factors on this boat. What do, what do I do? I, oh, there, I forgot a thumb. <laughs> I, gave it, I gave it a point five. Maybe we should stop drinking. Uh, stop thinking? I'm drinking. Oh, both. Yeah. <laughs> Building the drama. The final score for the Lagoon 450, in our estimation, 41. 41 points. Pretty freaking okay. solid. There you go. Scientific fact. Right there. <laughs> We deliver nothing but scientific facts on boat shopping. Yes. What was that, Zeke? Come here. Come here. Did you like the lagoon? How many thumbs do you give it? Anyway, go check out our Leopard 48 tour, and there's a lot more tours to come. If you're viewing this a year in the future, go check out all the other ones that are out there. And hopefully you already know what boat we have. Uh, and let us know. You might, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Mysteries abound. Alright. Alright, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. We'll actually do the cheers.